C.S. Lewis described the birth of friendship as going down like this. What? You too? I thought I was the only one. 20 years after my MS diagnosis, I still remember locking eyes and having one of Lewis's love at first sight encounters. I'd been dying to connect with someone like me, someone just starting out dealing with bad boyfriends, questionable career choices, and student debt while trying to process a life-altering and, quite frankly, devastating new disease. I went to a support group and couldn't have felt more lost in a poorly lit room full of people decades older than me. Everyone had much more advanced MS. I was looking for answers, but this particular group seemed resigned. The vibe was a bummer. And then a young woman walked in. Hi, I'm Sherry, she said like the drink. Chances are, if you're here, you're looking to add more C.S. Lewis type connections to your crew. But social interactions aren't just keeping us alive. They keep us thriving. And thriving with MS takes some work. If you have MS, the benefits of having one or more MS friend are many. And that's what this weekend is all about. How many of us have lied to a partner or friend or even our own mothers saying some version of, I'm fine, for fear of the consequences of not being seen or understood or for sharing too much of the difficult reality of MS? They say you don't get it unless you get it. Emotional support is probably the first benefit we think of when we consider the pros of connections to others with MS. The most empathetic, educated person you know simply cannot understand exactly what this life with MS is like, unless they have it. We know something others do not, and lucky them. But lucky us that we're not the only ones. We don't have to go through MS alone. Sherry and I never went back to that support group. Through word of mouth, we connected with two more young and newly diagnosed women and formed our own group. We met in the living room of my one bedroom apartment. Instead of stale cookies and cold coffee, we ate nachos and drank wine. We talked about our jobs and whether or not we felt we could disclose our diagnoses. We discussed new treatments and side effects. We dished about our sex lives and decisions about whether or not to have kids. And we supported each other in other ways too. I helped Sherry get a job at the finance company where I worked. 20 years later, she's climbed to the top of the corporate ladder while I've gone in a totally different direction. We still find ourselves texting things like, what do you think of this new drug? Is this a symptom or... And did you hear they're remaking Gossip Girl? Because even with MS friends, not everything is always about MS. Having a life-changing condition in common can be a fast track to friendship. You skip a lot of small talk and end up finishing each other's sentences. These relationships can normalize the least normal thing you've ever been through. There's a certain solidarity that comes with having a common enemy. But connecting with others can actually make us healthier in more ways than one. Research shows that who we hang with can impact our motivation to move more, to meditate, to eat better. Our networks can even impact our commitment to staying on a disease-modifying therapy. As my MS progressed, the people from that first failed support group became the people I needed to see but I needed to see them attached to an empowered, positive narrative. My initial resistance to using mobility aids stemmed from feelings of otherness. As recently as 2017, there were virtually no style role models I could relate to. Cultivating a virtual community of cool kid mobility aid users was key to my ability to adapt and accept this stage of my life and disease. My ability to proudly proclaim myself a babe with a mobility aid has helped make space for others to feel the same kind of confidence and belonging. Confidence is contagious. 
je suis passée de la fille qui cachait sa canne sur les photos à celle qui anime une nouvelle émission de télévision consacrée à la mode des personnes handicapées et à leur potentiel de beauté. Une émission que j'ai moi-même créée. Je ne m'attribue aucun mérite pour les dizaines de milliers d'histoires positives sur les handicaps qui ont envahi les médias sociaux depuis 2017. Mais je suis fière d'être un chef de file de ce mouvement. Ça prend toute une communauté pour commencer à changer le discours. Mon espoir est que ce soit plus facile pour ceux et celles qui nous suivront de foncer dans la vie, de vivre avec leur maladie sans complexe. Lorsque vous avez reçu votre diagnostic, on vous a peut-être dit de ne pas laisser la maladie vous changer ou vous définir. Vous vous êtes peut-être même dit « j'ai la SP, je ne suis pas la SP ». La vérité, c'est que la maladie nous change. Le problème, c'est de penser que c'est pour le pire. Si j'étais la même personne qu'à 23 ans, je porterais encore des pantalons cargo et je sortirais avec un barman qui porte la barbichette. Lorsqu'on nous dit de ne pas laisser la maladie nous définir, on comprend qu'il ne faut pas parler de notre respect ou ne pas te ramener à elle. Le message qu'on reçoit, c'est qu'il faut travailler fort pour ne pas laisser la SP nous transformer en une version inférieure de nous-mêmes, une version plus triste, peu fréquentable. En intériorisant ce message, on entretient un monologue dangereux où on se dit que la SP est un fardeau que les gens vont nous éviter si on en parle. En plus d'être totalement injuste, cette idée nous empêche de tisser des relations profondes qui demandent que les deux personnes affichent leur vulnérabilité. Si vous êtes incapable de vous dévoiler devant un être cher, votre relation sera limitée. Ce sont ce dont nous avons réellement besoin. C'est du soutien et de l'espace nécessaire pour laisser la SP nous changer. Et ces changements sont déterminés par notre façon de nous adapter et de donner un sens à l'injustice qui nous frappe. Plutôt que « ne laisse pas la maladie te changer », ça nous aiderait beaucoup plus d'entendre. Comment puis-je te soutenir dans ce changement? J'ai changé l'ASP contre une bonne santé n'importe quand. Et je ne suis certainement pas la meilleure version de moi-même quand la douleur, la fatigue ou d'autres symptômes dictent ma journée. Mais, en général, j'ai plus d'empathie et plus de patience. Je sais ce qui est important dans la vie. J'ai changé en mieux et c'est en partie grâce à l'ASP. MS or otherwise, we're all negotiating how to connect and reconnect after the pandemic caused our social metals to atrophy. There are real challenges to nurturing connections while coping with re-entry anxiety a new MS diagnosis, or symptoms that make us question our understanding of who we are. Being connected to ourselves first is a great start. Developing an unshakable sense of who I am has been my best defense against the psychological impacts of this disease. A daily journaling practice, meditation, yoga, and talk therapy are great ways to strengthen your self-identity. Nurturing the connections you already have means investing in the relationships with the people you can be honest and vulnerable with. The people who make space for all of your emotions. Sometimes our loved ones don't want to burden us with their problems, which they deem insignificant in comparison to MS. Don't let this happen. This deprives you of being a friend and support to them. Healthy relationships are a two-way street. When seeking new connections, prioritize the activities you enjoy the most. Our time and energy are precious, especially with MS. And not every opportunity to be with others will be the right one. It can be harder to meet new people as adults. Think about trying something new. It's almost cliche to take an improv class but I had a blast in this low pressure environment and made some great friends in the process. I even met another improviser with MS. This is Canada after all.
there are a lot of us. If it were up to me, they'd be handing out MS diagnoses with a prescription for a highly effective DMD, a puppy, and your own personal sherry. My life has been tremendously supported by the connections I've made to others with MS. From intimate relationships to the thousands of people I connect with through my blog, I am regularly reminded that I can do this because you all are doing it too. There is still so much to be done to support people with MS. We need treatments that address progression and disability. We need affordable medication and medical supplies. We need access to appropriate employment opportunities. We need better design and greater accessibility. We need to feel safe and supported in disclosing our diagnoses. We need to see ourselves represented in the stories we tell. When we come together and connect as an MS community, we nurture in each other the confidence and self-worth to advocate for these things. Take advantage of the opportunity to build new connections over the next few days. And as you move through life with MS, nurture the relationships that empower you to stake your place in the world. Thank you, merci.